All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Russell City Reparative Justice Steering Committee. My name is Aisha Knowles, and I serve as the chair of the committee. We will begin with a roll call of the steering committee members. Start with Gloria Moore. Present. Good evening. <clears throat> Ayana Knowles is who admitted you to the, the meeting. Michael V. Johnson. Present. Good evening. Deborah Harris. Present. Good evening, Deborah. Marion Johnson. Present. Good evening, Marion. Liz Moran Sanchez. Present. Good evening, Liz. Good evening, Liz. <laughs> Tony Wynn. Present. Good evening, Tony. Good evening. Carolyn Johnson. We'll come back to Carolyn. Michael D. Johnson. We'll come back to Michael. Michael D. Johnson is present. Okay, thank you, Michael. Good evening. And my mother, Dora Hart, is here. Okay, thank you. Cindy Torres. Cece, I think I see Cindy. She might have stepped away just momentarily. Priscilla Figueroa. Present. Good evening, Priscilla. Francesca Thomas. Present. Good evening, Francesca. Kathy Rodriguez. Present. Good evening, Kathy. Good evening. And Velda Go. I believe Velda is not going to be able to join us this evening. All right. So has been established. Thank you, Michael. So as was mentioned earlier, this meeting is being recorded. We could go to the next slide. Thank you. And we have uh, a couple of things to share as we share this space together this evening. If you're able to go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So as, as you are in this space with us, uh, the Russell City Reparative Justice Steering Committee members, we are the former residents and descendants of Russell City, California. Our participation in the Russell City Reparative Justice Project Steering Committee meetings has been and continues to be a journey. We ask for your patience as we learn information that may cause pain and or may lead to difficult discussions throughout the course of this process. Thank you. Now, for the meeting agreements. Aisha, we have not done staff introductions. Oh, my apologies. Thank you. It's okay. For, thank you for catching that. I did. Uh, I did acknowledge the steering committee members. I apologize for not uh, acknowledging the staff members. Uh, we are also joined this evening by our uh, project management representatives. That uh, this is their first official meeting. Um, this is our second public meeting as a steering committee, so I would like to call on Dr. Kirby Lynch from the series Policy Research Group. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Kirby Lynch. I'm the director of research at Series Policy Research based out of Oakland, California. I'm born and raised um, from Vallejo, California, but am in solidarity uh, with the struggle to achieve reparations here in Russell City and for the descendants. And yes, we will be serving as the project management support for this initiative for the next nine months, um, but we'll be bringing with us a, oh, apparently someone can't hear me, but 
we'll be bringing with us a host of uh, facilitation experience, data research experience, and really a lot of our prior knowledge with supporting other reparations efforts um, across the state of California. Uh, we've been supporting San Francisco, Contra Costa County, and even grassroots efforts in Solano County to um, begin grassroots reparations organizing. So really excited to um, really just stand for you all and uh, fight the system, really. So glad to be here. And my uh, colleague is also on the phone or on the line. Thank you so much, Dr. Lynch. Uh, and you are joined. We are also uh, excited to have Aisha Canfield as well. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Aisha Canfield, also a director at Serious Policy Research. Um, I think Kirby gave us a beautiful introduction around our background and our skill set. And um, again, just here in solidarity, I live in San Lorenzo, which is very close. Um, and so it's good to see many of your faces again and looking forward to connecting with folks we have not spoken to previously. So, Yes, thank you both for being here. And from the city of Hayward, Assistant City Manager Regina Youngblood. Good evening. Good evening. And Jenny Chacon, Equity and Inclusion Officer. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Ms. Youngblood, are there any additional representatives from the city of Hayward that I missed? Checking the participant list, none that were expected, uh, but I don't see any additional Hayward staff online. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Uh, I forgot where we were. Uh, one more, uh, Aisha, um, acknowledging Martha Krieger is in attendance. From Senator Aisha Wahab's office. Okay. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Martha. Thank you for joining us. Really honored to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank and you including so much. our office. Thank you so much. All right. And I believe uh, earlier I uh, may have missed Carolyn, Carolyn Johnson uh, and Cindy Torres, I believe are in the meeting as well. I'm here. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn. I'm here. Thank you, Cindy. I, I think you had both just stepped away. All right, we'll proceed to the next item on the agenda. And Ayana, was it the meeting agreements that I had missed? Uh, just before we move on, introducing the presenters. Yes. Or was it the present? elder? Was it the elder acknowledgement? Sorry, I had missed. Yep. Yeah, but first, the um, introduction of the presenters. Do you want them up front, or do you want them at the item? Uh, we will, we'll introduce them at the item. Okay. All right. And so in the beginning of the meeting, rather than waiting until the end of the meeting, we would like to acknowledge the elders that are joining us this evening. And so if you're a former Russell City resident, please write your name in the chat. And even if you have attended this meeting before, we want it for official records um, that we have former residents in attendance. And it's not a contest, so you, you can take your time to write it, uh, but we would like to have it for the official record of this meeting that you are present. And then we will read it into the record. So we have Tony Wynn and Marion Johnson. Good evening. And then we will also add 
uh, the other names that are added to the chat to the meeting record. And Roberto Munoz, thank you for joining us. And Carmen Huerta. And then we have Robert Huerta. I can support Gloria Moore, James Knowles, Michael V. Johnson. Carolyn Johnson, Dora Hart. Cindy mentions she's there with Mabel Pacheco Torres and Minnie Pacheco Sanchez. Robin Randolph. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, everyone. And for those of you who uh, would still like to enter your name, uh, you, you still have the opportunity to do that. And we will share your name later on in the meeting. Now we are going to transition to uh, our main events tonight, an update from uh, the researchers. So I would like to introduce, uh, or and I will offer to the, the city, to uh, Ms. Youngblood, if you would like to introduce the researchers. But tonight we are joined by Liz Brown and George Berenger from uh, San Francisco State yeah. University. Uh, they have both been uh, participating and conducting research about Russell City uh, for the last couple of months, and they are here to share uh, the update of their research. Ms. Youngblood, would you, is there any? Uh, no, you did that very well. Uh, okay. Without further ado, Liz and George, I don't want to take up any additional time. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so I I'm going to Jump in. Can am I able to share screen? Yes, you should be able to. So I'm going to try. I have a slideshow. Please let me know if uh, you can see the PowerPoint. Yep. You can. We see. Yep. Okay. I see it, but okay. it's not in. There you go. Perfect. Good there. Yep. All set. Okay. All right. So. Hi, everyone. My name is George Bargainier. Elizabeth Brown is also on the call here. I'm, I'm going to talk first. Uh, I'm going to just provide a little information on um, what we did, the process, what we collected, um, and then I'm going to kind of give an outline of the story um, in terms of the information that we found, uh, and then provide a little summary, and then Liz will jump in. I'm going to try not to get bogged down too much in the details, but there are a lot of details, um, but uh, feel free. I'm just trying to give the kind of overall narrative. Um, but feel free to jump in and ask any questions, all right? Um, so start with just an overview of the project to date, what we've done. I'll talk a little bit about the, res the results of the historical media search. And then uh, Liz is gonna talk about, she'll wrap things up by talking about um, the next steps in terms of locating other residents uh, in Russell City, all right? All right, so just around. All right, so an overview of the project to date. Okay, um, so we did a property deed search. Um, we searched by, the search that we did was looking for the redevelopment agency of the County of Alameda. We started with some other search searches before, but that's what we settled in on because it was the most fruitful. Uh, we found 360 unique deeds. 349 of those were for individuals, seven for churches, three for businesses, and one was a government deed. 
Uh, we found other legal documents, uh, including offer to sell, probate sales, eminent domain orders, and orders of condemnation. Um, we did a board of supervisors uh, record search, and we found payments based on property groupings. All right. Um, in terms of the media, uh, we did a historical media search. We collected 491 different articles using the keywords Russell City. Uh, we excluded articles that were unrelated to Russell City that came up, uh, things like advertisements. Um, we included in what we've collected. Louder, louder. It might in, in what we've collected, we've included the source information. Uh, Liz has organized everything. So you have the source information there. You have the article summaries. You have keywords and then there's article images, right? So we've collected everything. So we actually have the articles themselves, but we have everything organized where you have the source information and article summaries and everything. So the newspapers that we collected all these things from, the Daily Review, we collected 290 articles, the Oakland Tribune, 181 articles, San Francisco Call, four articles, San Francisco Chronicle, one article, 11 articles from the San Francisco Examiner and four articles from the Argus. So it totals 491 uh, newspaper articles that we collected this information from. All right, um, just uh, a, a kind of timeline with the graph. You can see that uh, some of the key moments of increased media coverage. So you see 1957. You can see the graph here was when we found the most articles in that year. Um, and these moments correspond with the various efforts of the residents to get city, county, and state officials to address water and sewer lines. So you see um, at the time when the residents were, were really pushing for change, you're going to find more articles. And we'll talk about you know, some of the stuff that we found in just a moment. Um, but this graph you know, shows how many articles we found according to each year. All right, so I'll start with some of the precursors to the redevelopment. Um, so in the 1940s, um, found articles which talk about Hayward's four-point plan to consider creating water and sewer lines in Russell City in 1945. Uh, many of the roads, they, in, in, according to articles, many of the roads lacked pave, uh, paving or drainage and made things inaccessible, particularly in rainy weather. There's a lot of information on flooding and things like that. Uh, 1945, county authorities suggest that rezonings uh, as an industrial area, uh, and they took the stand that property values do not warrant ex extensive grading or paving. So we already see in 1945 that the county's already talking about the property values uh, do not warrant making the necessary improvements. Uh, and this is something, and I'll talk about this uh, towards the end, but um, you'll see particular narratives starting to form and, and the community talked about in particular ways, uh, depending on which strategy, uh, you know, the various actors are trying to take at, at, at that particular time. So 1946, the County Health Department uh, um, closes the Russell County Road for a time period and it begins denying building permits. Um, you know, if there are questions about this, this was actually, I think, kind of important to the story. Again, I don't want to get bogged down in too many of the details. Um, but uh, building permits were denied as early as 1949, which is very important to the story because once the area was considered blighted, um, people were not able to make the necessary uh, developments to their homes and the necessary changes to be able to fit building codes and things like that. So this happens as early as 1949. Uh, in 1949, in one of the articles, there's an article about a supposed riot. Um, and this is uh, shortly after one of the fires, one of the early fires, uh, we found that some of the youth in Russell City um, organized themselves to do a cleanup of the area and what they were doing, according to the article, was uh, collecting you know, valuable, the metals and things that they could find that they could recycle and get money for. And they did this because they wanted to fund uh, the purchase of a fire truck, right? Because they knew that that was something that the, the area needed. So you can see this early as 1949, the community efforts to try to organize themselves, right? 
Um, and in that same year, I, I felt, I th think that this is kind of interesting, but the same year, and this is one of the more kind of obscure articles, there's an article about a supposed riot that happens in a, a, one of the, I guess, kind of like a dance halls in, in Russell City, where um, some outsiders come in order to uh, clean up uh, the supposed uh, vice in the area. And it sounds, according to the article, that you know this is the type of racial violence that happened in many urban areas uh, across the United States at this time frame, right? Um, so this is something I think, and we can talk about this later. I think this is something I think uh, is an important part of the story uh, that that uh, we could that possibly could be delved into later um, by doing some oral histories, right? Uh, the type of uh, overt racial violence. Um, how it existed, if it did exist, and how so, um, I think uh, could be elaborated on by some of the people who survived uh, that were alive at this time, or some of the stories that people uh, who are the descendants have heard. Um, dysentery outbreak in June of 1949, there was a dysentery outbreak uh, due to the specific cesspool seeping into the water wells. There's a baby who perished, uh, which baby was 20 months old. Um, and died uh, as a result of the dysentery outbreak. 13 others were sickened. And then this became an issue, right? It became an issue for the county officials. It became an issue in the media that, you know, this is an area uh, where there were health issues, um, you know, supposed uh, health, health issues because of uh, the uh, need to redevelop the area. Um, the city of Hayward in 49 creates a plan to extend the water lines to Russell City by widening the pipe to the National Guard. Um, and then this would also serve as Russell City. The county of Alameda Supervisor Jansen reports that the county cannot go along. So this is something, one of the early uh, ideas, and this is something that never uh, fully takes shape. Um, also in the 40s, again, you see some of the citizen actions. So the Russell City residents uh, signing multiple petitions. Uh, various organizations support county providing water services, uh, that being the, the Hayward Carpenters Local 1622, Mount Eden Improvement Club. In 1949, there seems to be some success, although the, and this is one of the quotes from the papers, although the county cannot directly pay for such a line, Supervisor Bartell said that the supervisors are willing to give the city additional aid in other fields where the board has legal authority, which will repay the city in full for extra expenses of the Russell City line. If the city can find a way to lay the line, the supervisors will see that the additional county funds make up the difference. So there was some hope for optimism early on, but you know the story uh, changes and takes shape in different ways going forward. Um, so still with the uh, precursors to redevelopment, um, this is Supervisor Bartell it says, let me assure you uh, very definitely that the Board of Supervisors is not unmindful of the unsatisfactory condition now existing, and the time may come when drastic action will be taken. If the people affected in that area do not clear up the conditions themselves, which is their obligation and not the Board of Supervisors. So we see the, uh, the obligation being placed on the residents themselves and, and not the Board of Supervisors. Uh, in December 1949, uh, Related to the National Guard water line, the city of Hayward begins laying 12 inch line to the National Guard, which would have been big enough to service Russell City, uh, but Alameda County declines to extend the line all the way to Russell City. All right. Uh, the Oral Loma Sanitary District annexation was another important part of the story. Uh, in October 1950, the Citizens Committee, Committee for the Improvement of Russell City and the Russell City Civic Club formed. 1951, the Oral Loma Sanitary District annexation um, efforts were launched. Russell City, Mount Eden, and other southern areas. So 1952, uh, the Russell City, Mount Eden Taxpayers Committee created to oppose election on annexation. And in 1952, the court denied the election. And the annexation would have allowed uh, the services to be applied into Russell City. Um, so the community services district in the 1950s was a petition to Alameda County to create the Russell City Community Service District. The district would be assessed levies to fund water and sewer service. Uh, in 1953, the petition was there's a petition to opposing the district. 
1954, Jack Reynolds' home burns down due to lack of available water to fight the fire. This is another important fire. There's a series of fires all the way out uh, throughout this story, um, which we can talk about also. Uh, but the Alameda, Alameda, uh, Alameda County supervisors call for the creation of the Community Services District as a result of this fire. The election held and passed the proposed Community Services District virtually cut in half by protests from residents of the area between uh, Clay Witter Road and the Southern Pacific Railroad on either side of Russell Road. Uh, now includes 143 acres bounded by the railway, Madison Street, Russell Road, and Sixth Avenue. And these are all quotes from, um, you know, the various articles and things, but again, we have all these organized uh, with summations of, of the articles. October 1954, the county studies the Russell City Plan and considers federal urban renewal funds. And that, that's another important part of the, the, the story, I think, is the um, why the decision was not made um, to go with the kind of federal urban renewal funds. Um, but the suggestion was that the Russell City uh, be developed into industrial land at that point. And Russell City and Southern Alameda County Defense Committee was formed. And then the residents in November 54 petitioned Alameda County to, to zone Russell City residential in order to qualify for federal funds. Um, but Alameda, Alameda County declines to do so. So um, if the rezoning, um, if Alameda County would have rezoned as residential, uh, Russell City um, would have had the ability to apply for federal funds. Um, the county decided to not go that route. The Board of Supervisors ultimately decided to not go that route because to do so, there would have been guidelines and they would have had to, according to those guidelines, um, you know, meet certain uh, standards in terms of the residents, in terms of relocating them and things like this. So although it would have provided money and I think it was something like, uh, I think it was, I don't know, Liz, if you remember the exact amount, but I think it was 70% of the estimated uh, 2.25 million would have came from uh, federal funds had they have gone that route. Right. Um, but yeah, they didn't want to do that because then they would have uh, been held liable for you know, the things that they would have had to provide for the residents. So they chose not to go that route. Uh, 1956, the Hayward Master Plan identifies Russell City for annexation and industrial development. November 1956, Russell City uh, Civic Club discussion around annexation to the city of Hayward. Uh, the board, board attorney, Frederick Dubofsky, noted federal help could improve housing in Russell City without forcing people to leave the community. And this is an important quote from one of the papers. Um, Alameda County supervisors invite experts to tour potential industrial areas, including Russell City. Uh, and then again, another, uh, sadly, another fire. In this one, four children are kill killed in the fire, uh, which leads to wider citizen concern about Russell City. Uh, in 1956, uh, Alameda County Grand Jury Report brands Russell City as a slum area, creating serious health condition. And there's going to be all kinds of repercussions for this once the area uh, was deemed a slum area. Um, it had uh, serious consequences for types of improvements, types of rentals and things like this. The redevelopment plan begins. So in March of 1957, redevelopment costs without relocation estimated uh, at $1,040,000. Federal government, if approved plan, would uh, fund two thirds of that cost, right? And the res residents would have to agree to beautify their homes if, if this um, was honored. So in May 57, the residents uh, asked for residential zoning again in order to qualify for federal urban redevelopment funds. Uh, October 1958, the county commits to rezoning Russell City for industrial use. August of 59, a failed bid to incorporate with Mount uh, Eden begins. February 1960, incorporation bid ends, fails to meet deadline to file for election due to opposition. All right, the redevelopment begins continued. So March of 61, the county looks into federal urban renewal funds. Uh, July 61, the study of Russell City by county completed. 
So the county identifies 311 families in the area, 37 vacant homes. Uh, in August of 61, the city of Hayward pledges support for redevelopment plans and will provide water and sewer lines and annex area if industrial development is pursued. So if industrial development is pursued, then the city uh, pledges this support. October 61, the county decides to finance redevelopment with county funds uh, because federal government requires resident relocation and places restrictions on the development. So this is, seems why this is why they chose this path. Uh, November 61, Alameda County Mayor's uh, Conference votes to oppose redevelopment eight to one based on complaints from Oakland Mayor uh, John Houlihan. So this is another interesting point uh, for me. There was, uh, he's, he, we tend to think of like the uh, elitist like ruling classes all agreeing, but there was this kind of a conflict between, you know, uh, Oakland city officials and other officials in the county of who was gonna bear the cost, right? And so some were pushing for this to be on federal funds and others weren't, right? And so depending on you know what interest they had and where they were located. And there's a wealth of information in the articles that uh, discusses this. So the county finance redevelopment. So Alameda County locates funds for redevelopment by reappropriating money uh, for the voting machines. So this is in April of 61. Uh, there was money set aside for voting machines, but what they did is reappropriated this and they used this to get the redevelopment um, started. So in, in January of 62, Alameda County hires a relocation chief. July of 62, uh, the Alameda County Board of Supervisors establishes the Citizens Committee for the Redevelopment of Russell City. In uh, January of 63, the public meetings held on Russell City and residents again in opposition. Right. In February 63, the board adopts the final Russell City redevelopment plan and in March of 63, relocation is about to begin. All right, the county finance redevelopment. Uh, so the Russell City appraisers are hired in May of 63. November 1963, the redevelopment agency uh, begins buying homes and the Santucci hog farm is sold. All right, uh, and the Santucci hog farm uh, received the overwhelming uh, pr uh, proportion of the money that was set aside. Uh, fires in Russell City redevelopment area begin again, and Trilby Reynolds' home is destroyed in March of 64. July of 66, uh, the raising of the area is planned. In December of 66, uh, former Hayward Mayor Denton Reeder is charged in the Santucci farm deal um, um, over, I, I believe not disclosing uh, uh, tax information on um, the profits that he made in that sale. In January 67, the last family of pioneer Juana Feliciano leaves the area and that home again is burned uh, during the move. Um, redevelopment ends, so, uh, in March of 1967, the Russell City area is put up for sale. Um, April 67, Alameda County Board of Supervisors sets the price for the area at $2.85 million. September 67, developer offers $1.6 million for the land. November of 67, Cabot, Cabot and Forbes, Forbes uh, their bid of $2.4 million is successful. December of 67, the land is officially zoned as industrial. In June of 68, the, the sale of the land to Cabot Cabin and Forbes meets its final approval. In December 68, Alameda County Board of Supervisors plans to use those funds from the proceeds to buy the land for the future Santa Rita jail site. All right, so um, this is a kind of summary of what we learned uh, from this project. Um, you know, other people mentioned where they're at. I, I live in Hunters Point, so um, it's, it was interesting some of the similarities um, in going through the historical articles of some of the stuff that you see then and some of the things you see now. Um, but one of the things that we kind of learned is that 
through the archival research kind of tells the story of racial control over the 20th century and tells some of the shifts, right? So both the symmetries and asymmetries. So if you look at the shifts over the decades, there's uh, one point in time when the people's lives are valued simply because they're providing rent and capital to those who live outside, right? But then once the land um, is deemed blighted, right, and it becomes uh, this kind of a hot political issue, right, of this, you know, the largest slum or the worst slum in the Bay Area, um, the rent and the capital that people are receiving for it um, has serious consequences for how the people are actually viewed, right, the people that are actually living in those communities. Um, and those people in their lives are no longer of use, right? And they're only no longer of use because the county, you know, decides that that land is more valuable as an industrial site, right? Um, so the people can be, become disposable, uh, it seems in, in one of the ways. Um, but then also, uh, you know, Liz finding the, the piece about the Santa Rita jail um, has serious consequences on the people themselves um, and not literally the same people, right? Um, but how the people themselves can become commodities, right? And so how that capital that's gained from the sale of the land is then used to purchase this property where the jail's built on and that becomes another way to generate capital and, and profits. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, we tend to think of like white supremacy and the kind of absurd like examples like racial violence, you know, which we definitely see. Uh, a lot of these fires are mysterious. We don't know where they come from. Uh, but one of the things I think I learned by going through these articles is it's white supremacy is much more ubiquitous and it functions in a much more sophisticated ways. So it's something which is undergirding not just the, the sale of the land and you know the Board of Supervisors kind of rationality on what they wanted to do, but the actual lives of the people, right? Um, and it's a much more complicated story because it's something that's not just happening to racialized groups, right? When you read the story and you go through everything, it's something that happened to black and brown people, but also you know poor white folks, right? Um, and then there are moments when you know, the different groups have these kind of competing interests and groups that you think would not be working together are working together and groups that you think would not be working against each other are working against each other. Um, so it's something I think part of the larger story that it tells us is, uh, you know, how things uh, can shift according to what those competing interests are. Um, Liz, you want to get to the next slides and I'll just go forward as you're ready. Yeah, or you want to pause and see if anybody has any questions. That's cool. Yes, when we are we going to be able to get to tell some stories today about our family? So Daniel, we and actually, so thank you for asking that. Uh, so we're going to focus actually on finishing the presentation first, Liz, and then maybe that will answer some of the questions. Daniel, we're this isn't the meeting where we're going to be sharing some of the stories, but um, that'll be one of the things that we discuss at the end of the meeting is agenda items for a future meeting. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. All right, I wanna go ahead and go to the next slide. So we also wanted to present a little bit today about the issues that we've encountered locating non-propertied residents. Um, because we've been unable to locate the actual redevelopment records, we've had to rely on these proxies such as the deed, the media, um, and the Board of Supervisor records. And part of the issue is that many of the records that exist um, that are geographical are property-based. Um, so for instance, birth, marriage, deaths, what, what are often called vital records um, are not geographic. Don't, you can't search them geographically. You have to search them by the person of the date. Um, so there's kind of few kind of geographical recording touch points for non-property owners. Um, so we've looked at two different places. Um, one has been the census records. 
Um, the difficulty here is that the only the census schedule from 1950 is available. The census schedule is what um, are considered the original records so that, you know, these are records that you see the like actual census workers writing handwritten names of everybody as they do their surveys. Um, so those come available every 72 years. So we have the 1950 ones, but the 1960 ones aren't available until 2032. And so what we've done is um, as part of our media search, the reason why we did the wide Russell City um, search was to also find um, you know, various articles where back in the day they would um, often like put the name like Liz Brown and then actually put the address. And so we would be, have been looking through those articles to locate um, other residents through those searches. And so unfortunately this also only samples those who are noteworthy and who make it into um, make it into the newspaper. Um, so, you know, our media search obviously is going to be limited and is not necessarily the best, uh, is not going to be as comprehensive as we might want it to be. Can you advance the slide, George? Um, so we, as part of this, we identified um, 199 residents' names. Um, obviously, you know, these are unique names. Uh, many of these residents reappeared uh, repeatedly um, throughout various articles. Um, and so this is primarily from, you know, various sources, but primarily from the media. And with these 199, there were 122 full addresses identified. Um, as we look at these names, however, we see that some of them are duplicates of the um, property deeds that we collected. Um, we have a 79 that are not duplicated. And then there's another 70 that maybe duplicates may not be. So they might be, for instance, the children of the person who owns the house or somebody who lives in the house who's not listed on the deed, et cetera. So that's, uh, that's been our efforts to find non-property residents. Um, George, can you advance the next slide? Um, and so we expect to um, complete this work by mid or late May. Um, so many of your questions in the chat have been about um, getting access to this information. So I just want to say absolutely, um, the, all of the information that we have collected um, is being sent over to the city of Hayward. Um, so we've already sent um, a list, a comprehensive list of all the deeds um, and the images. The deeds have, uh, the list of deeds have the owner's names identified. And then what they also have identified, even though you're gonna have the images, they also have identified where you can find it if you wanted to go back in um, to Alameda County and um, for instance, like get a hard copy or an official copy, um, et cetera. In addition, we've already sent to the city of Hayward um, the newspaper article sources, the summaries and the images. I believe that they're working on getting that up on the web now. Um, we've sent over to the city of Hayward the census schedule from the 1950s. Uh, we also sent over the ones um, from the 1940s as well. So you can see the differences in the um, change in demographics during that period. Um, and then finally, um, the other property records that George um, discussed. So, um, you know, there's, these are various things like eminent domain lawsuits, et cetera. Um, the last thing that we're finishing up now is our Board of Supervisors records collection. This is where we're finding information about um, prices that were paid to groups of properties. Um, and then we're writing up the final report. Um, and so we expect all of this to be done in mid to late May and to hand it over to you all. All right, I think that's it, George. Thank you, Liz and George. That was a lot of information. And there are some questions that have been in the chat that I think some of which have been provided already or answered already. Uh, so the additional collected information, articles, uh, town hall meeting info. Uh, so as uh, has been mentioned, um, so for those who may have just joined us, so that information, the city is working on uploading to their website. Um, so as the time goes on, that will be, and maybe Ms. Youngblood, that would be 
it would be best if somebody from the city addresses how that information will be shared on the on the city's platforms. Yes. Um, so uh, certainly prior, just as a caveat, prior to sharing that information on the city's platforms, we will be sharing how that information will be viewed online with the steering committee. But once uh, that step has uh, been taken, our intent is to on the project site that exists today, include a link to another page where you can search for documents. And what we're trying to figure out is if they can be searched by name, obviously I think the answer is yes. But the question that we're trying to figure out is can we also search by an address or a street name if you have that? So we're putting several tags on the data that has been provided to us by the researchers so that certain tags will return certain information when you search the city site for it. We also intend to make uh, able and available the capability for individuals who don't find their documents there, but actually have documents themselves to share to upload those documents directly to the site for review and processing by the steering committee to determine their validity. Thank you. Ayana, are there any questions that I may have missed in the chat? Not that I can see. All right. If there is anyone who has a question for the researchers, uh, you are welcome to raise your hand. So we do have a few questions and just for the good of the group, um, I will read names out in order that the hands were raised. Thank you. Is it Malika or Malika Johnson? Yes, it's Malika. Thank you. Malika. I, I didn't actually have a question. I just wanted to say thank you. I wanted to say thank you to the researchers and to everybody who's working so hard to organize all this information. Um, it is both beautiful and heartbreaking. So. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Miss Deborah. Uh, yes, yeah, so I wanted to know if there was, um, oops, I'm not on mute, right? No. We can okay. hear you. Okay. I wanted to know uh, if they are going to uh, share the amount that was given to the Hog Ranch. There's a lot of uh, things being said about that, and I wanted to know if we can get that information on this discussion or if it has to come out in, in paper form. Um, I can, I, yeah, I mean, if it's okay, I can just tell you it was $510,000. 510000 thank you. Thank you, Ms. Deborah. Mikhail? Yeah, thank you. My question is for the, uh, the researcher. George, is that correct? Yeah. I want to thank you, man. Um, powerful information. And uh, I was just sitting here saying, wow, you know, what, what you said about how everything played out. It wasn't overt, it was covert mostly. And then, so the, my question for you is where, like, where did you find? Where did you find, what did you find and how did you find a lot of the, what, what did you do your research and where was the information archived at? I'm just kind of curious, you know, I know that's what your specialty is, but I'm just kind of curious, like, was it archived in Hayward? Did you have to do research to the universities or, you know, kind of like, cause, you know, I came on a little bit late and so I'm just kind of curious, like, you know, what route did you take to find the information? Yeah, Liz, you want to talk about that? Liz found the, the thing about the Santa Rita jail, which um, I don't know if anyone had known about that part of the story, which I found was just, uh, I don't know. I was I was floored when, when she found that. Liz, you want to talk about that? 
Yeah, I can. Um, so, you know, we've looked in a number of different places. Um, unfortunately, Alameda County doesn't have like a centralized archive. So you have to get records from the various agencies. So we've looked. Um, so the primary places have been um, the property um, recorder's office. So the deed recorder's office down in, um, it's on, I think it's on 11th. Um, and then the board of supervisors clerk's office. Um, and then the all the newspaper articles have primarily come from the Oakland Library. Wow. Okay. And then we did some subsequent searches too. As Liz was mentioning, like some of the key players in some of the articles. So like Liz had all these articles that she found, and then so there was some stuff in the in the early efforts by the community, and there was a lawyer who was involved. So I just started like looking up articles on this particular lawyer. Uh, when uh, Liz found the information about uh, the realty company that purchased it, then I started doing subsequent searches on the history of that realty company and found all kinds of crazy stuff. So just, okay. you know, when you find one piece, start looking for other things. Okay, thank you. And then just to clarify, you said some of the information was found at San, through Santa Rita's County Jail Archive. Is that what you're, what you're saying? No, no, he was mentioning that we found out the information about the Santa Rita County Jail through our searches. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Miss Marion and then Renee. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. I had a question about uh, the amount of money he said that there was 500 and some thousand dollars. Was that money spent to pay out to residents? And of that, the second question is of that $500,000, how much was paid? You said there was a substantial amount paid to the pig farm and there was some collusion there. Was that a part of the $500,000? And do you know how much that pig farm uh, was actually paid to lose? Yeah, Liz has the exact amount. So the the five hundred uh, was it five hundred and ten thousand was that was what was paid solely for the farm. And then what was the leftover amount, Liz, to be spent? Um, I believe else? I don't have the exact amount. I think it's um, I could pull it out. It's either about one point seven or one point nine um, million as the total amount. So about twenty five percent of that, or a little over twenty five percent of that, went to the Santucci Hog Farm. There was also another big. Um, another big piece of property as well that received a um, $100,000. Uh, that was late in 1967. So another one of the big rural places. Was that, was that, do you know who that $100,000 went to? Was it a family or was it a business or? Um, it was, uh, I think a rancher in the area. I think that was the, it was, the name was Jose Mateos. Thank you. Renee. Hi, thank you. So I just have a question. I, I kind of came in late um, into the meeting and I know that you guys were saying about the list that um, that's gonna be released from like either addresses or uh, the census. What happens when that list is released and then you don't, see your family's name on there are there going to be opportunity for people to um you know speak up about that and say you know like no I know for a fact that my family was there oh yes that's a great question I'm so sorry I did not address that um absolutely um so what we have been working with the city of Hayward on is creating essentially a form where uh, for instance, if you don't see the name on the list, or even if, you know, maybe the name comes up in an article, but maybe it's not attached to a property, then um, you can submit the information so that we can then upload it um, to that website. Okay, thank you. And how will we find that information when it's released? Um, is this going to be like something that we find by just attending these meetings or what? Um, I'm going to put that over to the steering committee or Regina. Yeah, I, I can speak to that just quickly. Uh, on the city's website now, under the Russell City Reparative Justice Project, uh, there is a form that you can fill out 
we call it the contact form, so that you get information about the progress of this project and these meetings. And so that would be one way that we'd be informing people that a new uh, functionality for the website exists, which is this information that we're talking about right now. So if you haven't already signed up through that, that um, portal, uh, then please do that uh, following this meeting so that you can get updated information about the project. Thank you. And I just pasted the website for that in the chat if anybody needs it. Thank you, Renee. And Aisha, I will pass it back to you. We are just about at time for this item. Oh, wait, Kirby, sorry. Yeah, I had a, a question for the researchers and one great uh, research that you've done in unearthing those archives. I want to know in your research, did you come across anything related to Southgate uh, development project and any of like uh, mentioning the city of Hayward doing Southgate and performing eminent domain on Russell City, like in the late 60s, early 70s? Um, not, no, not related to I, um, that. I, that doesn't ring a bell at all. Um, but it could be if it was the late 60s, 70s, the Russell City project was starting to wrap up by that point. So, um, you know, they may not have been mentioned together at that point. Okay, thank you. Hey, Aisha? Yes, was there, I thought there was one, uh, Michael, there was, Michael V. Johnson was there. I, th I thought I saw a hand before Michael V. Johnson. It was Kirk. It was Kirby. They put their hand up and then took it down, but I caught okay. it. And so that was the question. And then Michael V. Johnson. So in your research, did you uncover, uncover any of the actual information about the borders of Russell City? That is the size where it started, where it ended, anything that speaks to the total expanse that was called Russell City. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember the exact, um, the exact locations, but there were some articles where they mentioned uh, how it was decided between certain streets and certain areas. Do you remember the exact ones, Liz? Uh -huh. no, I mean, I think um, the kind of borders of Russell City is kind of an interesting question because it, it you know, if we're talking about the, that's one aspect of it. But then if we like start including um, the like kind of surrounding area, as we see like in these various um, like moments that George talked about, people are trying to kind of get their um, parcels included or excluded from the boundaries. So the boundaries then shift. And is there any particular, we know that Russell City was named after Mr. Russell. And we know that he purchased the entirety of what became Russell City. Did you go back and look and see what was the original land purchase of Mr. Russell and compare that to anything that you may have found? We pulled a few articles on Mr. Russell um, related to his buying of the property. And then um, as well, his uh, there was a lawsuit with, that he had going back and forth. And then he also did some stuff relative to the county trying to get his taxes reassessed. Um, so we have that information, but that's not that wasn't the bulk of our focus. I I have one question related to the, the information that you uh, shared about Santa Rita. Um, so did you find any information from the clerk of the board or any of the, any information from Alameda County that reflected the sale of Russell City and then it reflected that it in actuality was used for Russell City or the information that information was limited to the newspaper articles. So um, you... Sorry, we haven't gotten to those years yet in the Board of Supervisors, so I can't answer that for certain. Okay, thank you. 
All right. Don't see any hands and I believe that wraps up our questions. So Liz and George, thank you for joining us this evening. So there's a lot of information um, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. All right. So this brings us to the time where uh, there have been some items identified in the chat for a future meeting. Uh, I think there are uh, some have asked questions about sharing stories from Russell City, um, sharing stories either that have been passed along to you or that you would like to share about your experiences in Russell City. Um, so that sounds like that is an item for a future public meeting. Uh, I know in some of my conversations this week, folks would also like to hear from uh, the county of Alameda from uh, someone from the Board of Supervisors about the Reparations Commission that was just created. Uh, that is a request that has been made. Uh, are there any additional requests for a future public meeting? You can either enter them in the chat uh, or raise your hand. Or you can also send them via email. You don't have to say them right now. All right, doesn't look like uh, there are any items to be shared. Uh, items for the good of the order. This is usually the time where members of the committee share any items they'd like to share for the good of the order. Happy things, things for the greater good, the greater Russell City community. Liz Sanchez, I see your hand raised. Hello, everybody. Um, Aisha, can you tell us about the upcoming docu documentary on May 6th, if that's still happening? Uh, The documentary is called The Apology, and it is taking place at the Hayward Veterans Memorial Hall at 6 p.m. And um, I don't have the website memorized, uh, but it is something that- uh, I can pull it up. Thank you. If you could place the link in the chat, please. Thank you. So if you are a former resident or descendant or interested in learning more about Russell City, this is also an opportunity for you to uh, join us. If there are no other announcements, we thank you for joining us and we are going to adjourn the meeting. The next meeting of the Russell City Reparative Justice Project Steering Committee will be, the next public meeting will be on Wednesday, May 31st. Thank you and have a good night. <laughs>